Lavoisier wasn't a scientist by profession. He was the head of tax enforcement in Paris. His great idea was to build a huge wall around the city and to tax everything that came and went. But his taxes on the simple things in life, bread, wine, and cheese, did not endear him to the average Parisian. This scrupulous, fastidious young man did still allow himself the occasional act of passion. In 1771, Lavoisier married Marianne Pauls, the daughter of his colleague in the tax office. Thus, he saved her, as he had promised, from an arranged marriage to a count 40 years her elder. Allow me to show you something. Lavoisier, I think, found his job as a tax collector really rather tedious, and the times he looked forward to were the evenings and the weekends when he could indulge his passion for chemical experimentation. And he called those times his jour de bonheur, his days of happiness. Madame. What will happen if I take a bar of copper or iron and leave it outside in the rain for months on end. Madame Lavoisier. Mm. <laughs> Monsieur Lavoisier. The metals. <laughs> what will become of them? Is this a verbal examination? Prior to an examination proper, mm. sir? <laughs> I merely seek the truth. Then you join with me, Monsieur, for you know the truth. The copper will become covered in a green verdigris and the iron will last. I believe the term is uh, calcined. Most impressive, my charming wife. <laughs> but let me press you further. Mm -hmm. When the metal rusts, does it get heavier or lighter? Why, sir, I think you mean to trap me. Oh. And perhaps this little butterfly should land and allow me to take a closer look. Every last citizen in France of sensible age knows that when a metal rusts, it wastes away, it gets lighter and eventually disappears. Ah, but... Ah, stop. I have not finished. Contain yourself, sir. There is more. In a recently published pamphlet by a brilliant young chemist, Antoine Lavoisier demonstrates that the iron combines with the air. It, in fact, becomes heavier. Most impressive. I intend... Now, whatever you intend, monsieur, I intend to be by your side. I will learn all I can about your science and become your worthy colleague. Then let me show you how the iron combines with the air to form such a delicate union. Tomorrow, monsieur. Tomorrow. Marianne learned chemistry at her husband's side, but soon sought other ways to contribute to his work. She learned English so that she could translate contemporary scientific works. She took drawing lessons so that she could record in forensic detail the minutiae of their work together. She ran their laboratory and was the public face of Lavoisier, Inc. She was central to the whole research effort. Terrible thing to say. <laughs> you are a cheeky man. <laughs> this way, please, gentlemen. <clears throat> Monsieur, it is my great ambition to demonstrate that nature is a closed system, that in any transformation, no amount of matter, no mass, is ever lost, and none is gained. Over here, please. This precise amount of water is heated to steam. 
this steam is brought into contact with a red-hot iron barrel embedded in the coals. From this end, we cool the steam. But interestingly, we collect less water than we started with. So clearly, we lose a certain amount of water. However, we also collect a gas. And the weight of the iron barrel increases. Now, when we combine these two increases, the new weight of the iron barrel and the gas we have collected, they are exactly equal to the weight of the lost water. Ah, but is it atmospheric air, Monsieur Le Boisier? No. No, because I am measuring it to the very last grain, I can see that it is lighter than the air around us. And moreover, it is flammable. Voila. Water is made out of hydrogen and oxygen. So what he had done is get the oxygen to stick to the inside of a red hot iron rifle barrel. He was basically just making rust, which is oxygen and iron, but he was making the rust really quickly. Now that left the hydrogen, what he called combustible air, and that was just floating around as a gas. No mass had been lost, it had merely been transformed. And now he wanted to transform it all back into water. This is only the beginning. In the next few months, I hope to demonstrate that I can recombine this combustible air with vital air and transform them both back into water. I will recreate exactly the same amount of water that was lost here in this process. It is my hope to complete the cycle, water into gas, into water. and not a drop lost. For a long time, Lavoisier had suspected that the exact amount of matter, the mass, involved in any transformation was always conserved. But to prove this, he had to perform thousands of experiments, and he had to do the measurements with incredible accuracy. That's where his great wealth from being a tax collector came in. He could afford to commission the most sensitive instruments ever built, he became obsessed with accuracy. But Lavoisier's exacting methods were also starting to anger the growing mob of hungry, disenchanted Parisians. Antoine? Antoine? Oh, wake up, Antoine! I'm sorry. What time is it? This is almost time to receive Monsieur Marat. The Academy asks you to assess his designs. He claims to have made a great discovery. Oh, Antoine, have you forgotten? Oh, God. There's another charlatan with an idea to peddle. God give me patience. Monsieur Marat. Uh, monsieur, I have invented a device which projects an image of the substance of fire onto a screen. You see? Mm. When a lantern is shone through a flame, we see a shimmering pattern above the flame. My device renders the substance of fire visible. Have you collected it, the substance of fire? Have you? Have you trapped it and measured it? Well, no, but, but one can see it. I'm sorry, in the absence of exact measurements, of, of precise observations, without rigorous reasoning, one can only be engaging in conjecture, so this is not science. I am not given to conjecture, monsieur. Really, no. no. If you will excuse me, I, I am extremely busy today, but thank you. Thank you. So that is all? Then good day, monsieur!
Well, let me guess, Mara. The king's scientific despot has decreed that your invention does not conform to the version of the truth as laid down by the Academy. Lavoisier. He talks about facts. He worships the truth. Listen to me, my friend. They are all the same, the Royal Academies. They insult the liberty of the mind. They think they are the sole arbiters of genius. They are rotten to the core, just like every other tentacle of the king. The people, it is they who will determine right and wrong. Don't worry. In my next pamphlet, I will expose this persecutor of yours. For years, the Lavoisiers burned, chopped, melted, and boiled every conceivable substance. They'd shown that as long as one is scrupulous about collecting all the vapors, liquids, and powders created in a transformation, then mass is not decreased. Liquids might become gases, metals may rust, wood may become ash and smoke, but matter, the tiny atoms that make up all substances, none of it is ever lost. The crowning glory of this opus was their remarkable use of static electricity to cause oxygen and hydrogen to recombine back into water. As the French Revolution exploded, the royal family and whole swaths of aristocrats lost their heads on the guillotine. To the French revolutionaries of 1790, Lavoisier meant one thing and one thing only. He was the despised tax collector who'd built that wall around Paris. Lavoisier's job as a tax collector brought him under suspicion. He was denounced by a failed scientist turned radical journalist, Jean-Paul Marat. Where is Lavoisier? I don't know. Lavoisier! Lavoisier! 